So how does the dust end up 2,000 miles away on the bonnet of a car in Bristol? Well, believe it or not, it bounces there. Let me try and show you what's going on. Imagine this tennis ball were a grain of sand. Drop it from waist height and it bounces up about two feet. Now imagine this ping pong ball were a smaller particle of dust. Drop it from the same height and it bounces up about the same distance. But if I drop them both together, watch what happens then. <laughs> yeah, the ping pong ball flies off. What's happening actually is the ping pong ball is smaller and lighter. All the kinetic energy, the bounce in this ball has been transferred into it and away it goes. Obviously, real dust comes in many more than just two different sizes, which is why this is maybe a better analogy. Four different sizes of ball this time, stacked loosely on this plastic spike in the center. Obviously, real dust doesn't have a plastic spike connecting it, but your alternative is you watch for 10 hours whilst I try and drop all four in a line. Let's see what happens this time. It's gone. The small ball is, I mean, it's just, I'd show you again, but I, I'll have to wait for it to re-enter the atmosphere, I think. Seriously, it's gone. So that's the principle. But can actual dust really do the same thing? Even with the power of a huge dust storm behind it. To find out, I'm going to the source of most of the world's dust. Not the Sahara, but South Australia. Where Dr. Craig Strong has offered to help me start a dust storm of my own. What are you actually looking for? Well, I'm looking, Richard, for the landscape that's going to produce dust. And I think this stony plain is probably really good because you can see these rocks, they're acting as a trap for dust. So I think if we dig down, we'll find that there's plenty of dust. It's just that means it hasn't blown away yet because of the rocks are locking all that dust in. So when I see an area of rocks like this out here, I assume all the dust is gone. You think it's trapped underneath? Absolutely. So if we have a look down here, Richard, once we get under there, it's just dust gold. You know, look at this. It's incredibly fine. You can see that just blown away. So there's lots and lots of fine material. This is exactly what we want. That's what dust storms are really made of. The problem here is that the dust is trapped under these stones. That's why you know it's here, but it is trapped. Absolutely. How do we get it out? The rocks are doing the job of protecting the soil. So I reckon we probably should pick up the rocks and move them out of the way. That's the first step. Churn it up a bit. Churn it up a bit, that's right. That's easy. I can, do this. I can do that for you, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Well, I say me, but actually I mean this chap, Trevor, who just happens to have the very tool for pushing aside all those stones. It's not long before he's cleared an oblong area the size of a couple of football pitches. And it has an immediate effect. Look at that, dust devil. That's amazing. Probably those swirling winds come through here all the time, but because we've taken the stones away and uncovered the dust for it to be picked up, we can suddenly see them. Beautiful. But it's not what we're looking for. We want to make something just that little bit bigger. Yeah! Now we're talking. This is a dust storm. Oh, that's a lot of dust now. And it seems to be working. In amongst all the cars and chaos, the dust 
is starting to bounce. Individual grains are colliding against each other, just like the rubber balls did. And notice that they're not just bouncing in the direction of the wind, they're being propelled upwards. Well, there it is. We've got the dust bouncing just like it does in a real dust storm. But in a real dust storm, it bounces much higher, much higher than the storm itself. 